Hey guys, today we're going to we're going to install fonts on Arch Linux. So if you're wondering how to do this, um, today we're going to cover that. So let's clear this stuff out of the way and let, let's try this out. So you can search for fonts in the repo like this, pacman dash ss font, right? So y you can search for, for um, Or fonts packages. All right. Anyways, um, let, let's say if we wanted to search for TTF. So any anything uh, that matches TTF, like TTF Roboto or TTF Proggy Clean or, or any of those other fonts, we can uh, we can find packages for those. Now to install fonts, we could do something like this. We can just use Pac-Man and specify the different font packages we want. Like, say, if we want TTF DE Javu, or however you say that, or TTF Liber Liberation, or Noto fonts, let's install all of those, right? And that's that's as easy as it is. We're basically just installing packages. Now there are other ways to install fonts, but um. But let's try searching again, and let's try installing an arbitrary font. I'd like to try installing TTF Roboto, or Roboto, or however you say that. All right, let's give this a shot, and there we go. Install any arbitrary font we like. Now, um, you can also manually place fonts in a directory if you want them to be installed system-wide. So you can place them in the user share fonts directory. Now, you'll notice um, that uh, these are all relatively recent. And um, let, let, let's actually see. I don't recognize that Math Jacks font. Whoops. Any case. Yeah, th these look like uh, what I just, just installed. For example, if we look at TTF, Like this is probably what I just installed now. Although the file is from 2020. A anyways, um, point is you can put, put fonts in this directory, in the user share fonts directory. Um, or if you only want them to be accessible to one user, you can put them in your home directory. You, you can go to uh, cd.local and you can go to share font. Okay, so I only have a Jupyter directory in there, but if you were to go to the fonts directory, if you were to create this directory and place fonts in there, you would have those fonts accessible to you or to whatever user, whoever, uh, whoever's home directory you install those on, you can make them available to that user. Or you could install them system-wide using user share fonts. Now, um, everyone will need to be able to read the fonts, so you know they're going to need the correct permissions. Um, so files will need like 0444, and directories will need 0555. So what else? And if, if you're installing fonts manually, that, that's basically only necessary if you're installing them manually. If you are, um, you, you, you may need to run FC cache. So for example, FC dash cache to update the fonts, which I apparently don't have on my system right now. All right, so if you want this command, you're gonna actually have to install the font config package.
Oops. And there we go. So now if we want to run FC cache, we should be able to do it. Now if, if we had play, manually placed fonts into that system-wide directory, running FC cache oh, may ca actually cause that to work, essentially. Now um, if you want to give the, your X server direct access to the fonts, um, you want to add them to a font path entry in your xorg config file. Um, it's going to be one of these files, so let's take a look here. So it's it's going to be either this file or this file that you're going to want to add those fonts to. Now I don't have an X server installed on this system. This is a text-based system for now, so that's why you don't see any of that stuff. But once we install X Windows, we would be able to edit those files and add the font path entry into those files. Um, but just worth mentioning for the time being. Now, um, another extra tip, but Apple fonts may come in a DMG format. So a DMG package for, from OS X, they can be unpacked with 7-zip. So for example, I'm just going to show you the command. I don't have, have the actual file to unpack. but if you wanted to unpack, um, all right, so that command won't work, but um, actually we don't even have 7-zip on here at the moment, but essentially if, if, you, uh, if we did have this, this Apple fonts file, you could use 7-zip to unpack it and then manually install it. If you want to get Apple fonts, which are apparently popular, people want to get these you know, perfectly looking at fonts taken off of an Apple system and install them on their Arch Linux system. So that's relatively popular and worth knowing about. So hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting, if nothing else. You might want to give me a thumbs up. Um, you might want to hit that subscribe button also and uh, hit the little bell icon up. Otherwise, uh, YouTube's probably not going to let you know when we come out with a new video. Um, we do have a lot of great stuff coming up. On, and we've actually, if you want to check our list of videos, we've already put out a lot of uh, pretty interesting things, some more interesting than others. Um, we cover a lot of great stuff, um, coding, servers, hardware, software, 3D printing, electronics, uh, single board computers, robots, networking, all sorts of great tech related stuff that you're not going to want to miss. So if you, if you want your YouTube feed to uh, you know, be that much more interesting, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. But more important than any of that stuff, you're going to want to leave a comment down below, especially if you know something that I don't know. Um, definitely let me know, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video and reads the comments. Um, leave a comment that for them also. Any, any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I probably want to hear it. So do leave a comment down below. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.